could you please introduce yourself, sir? Sure. I'm Mike Waits. I'm CEO of Finning International, based here in Vancouver, BC. I understand this is a celebration right now for uh, Finning right now. It is. It's our 80th birthday, and Earl B. Finning started the company here back in 1933. So it's a tremendous opportunity for us to celebrate 80 years of uh, an iconic Canadian company that's international. Uh, obviously, you are a key supplier to the mining industry right now. It was yes. mentioned within your quarterlies right now as well, too. Yeah. Uh, firstly, when you come into the office right now, what are your key metrics? What do you look at right now that is happening in the industry? Do you look after you're looking at the markets? Do you look at the copper prices? We look at a lot of things. In terms of commodity prices, uh, we take a stronger view around the longer term. So, for example, on copper, we uh, look at the fundamentals around copper, the demand for copper, and what we say publicly is there are three billion people in Asia, in India, that want the things that we have in North America and Western Europe. They want durable goods, they want automobiles, they want houses, and we believe that gives a good strong demand for copper and base metals generally. And we can have a conversation about the slope of the demand curve, but they're not going away, so we think that's a good fundamental story around copper from the demand side. On the supply side, uh, South America, Chile, Peru, world-class basins, low-cost copper producers. So we think the fundamentals are there for copper. So that's an example of where we get to commodity prices. We take that longer-term view. Shorter term, we look at a lot of different things. Uh, as you might imagine, we look at uh, our quoting activity, our order intake activity, uh, any unusual cancellations, things like that. But they're shorter term in nature. Commodity prices we look at more longer term, more structurally. Uh, you had a great uh, Q3 right now. You're talking about a 21% revenue increase. Yes. Now, obviously, things have been tough right now for the juniors right now. Yeah. Uh, you're dealing mostly with the miners right now. You did highlight within your Q3 talking about how the strength has been in the mining sector. What are your customers telling you right now about the industry right now? It varies. It's fair to say right now a lot of our customers, uh, we believe, are trying to pace the rate of development. And so you've seen a lot of uh, miners uh, run up the marginal cost curve, their concerns about capital cost overruns. Some of them are running into different issues, perhaps environmental issues. And so there's a general sense we get of our customers, our mining customers, wanting to pace the rate of development and therefore creating the, the value to the shareholder but not chasing their tail running up these cost curves. But in South America, as an example, the uh, Chilean government has talked about $60 billion of expenditures over the next several years. The reason that's important is because Cadelco, the state-owned copper company, will be spending a lot of that. But even in South America, we're seeing a shift more to uh, brownfield activity. So we expect to see more incremental unit sales, perhaps less of the big package deals in South America. But again, in the overall scheme of things, not a bad development. It enables the supply chains to adjust uh, more more reasonably, rationally to the rate of activity. And it's a similar story in the oil sands. When, uh, when somebody's working on a brownfield right now, what is the difference? What types, of, uh, what types of machinery, what types of services do they need as you're posing in a greenfield right now? Um, it tends to be more uh, incremental units, replacement, rebuild units, so it might be some additional trucks uh, for in, in sales of uh, trucks to those customers, some dozers, some wheel loaders. Uh, it tends to be less of the large equipment like the large electric shovels, that type of thing. So expansion within the existing development is less risky for the customer, for the mining customer, and enables him to pace that rate of development a little easier versus a, a greenfield, obviously. What's happening in the oil sands sector right now? What are they saying? Um, the oil sands, we believe, is a huge asset for Canada. And uh, what is going on currently is, of course, the margins are being depressed. A big part of that story is the transportation situation, the pipeline situation. So those heavy crudes are being discounted even more by the fact that they're virtually, or some of the margin, they're shut in. And we need to see more pipeline activity coming out of, uh, of Alberta, access to the U.S. Gulf of Mexico, access to Asia. Uh, so having said that, we're seeing pre pressures and margins, and we have to work with our customers there to make sure that their business stays strong. But a similar story, there's a lot of caution. Uh, we have started delivering into the Curl project in the oil sands, which is a very large project. You are going to see uh, existing uh, miners expand also in the oil sands, but again, it'll be a slower pace development and you've heard from some of those customers about their plans for future mine expansions. 
What is Finning's exposure to the coal sector right now, and also what is exposure to fracking right now? Yeah, not not huge to fracking. Uh, we sell engines and uh, machines into the patch, uh, both conventional drilling as well as frack frack activity. That uh, activity is mostly in the form of like D6 dozers for. Uh, uh, well site construction, road construction into the well site, uh, engines in the frack units. So we have some exposure there. It's not huge. Uh, a lot of business going on there right now, obviously, with the, the uh, fracking activity. Um, in terms of coal, we're mostly uh, dealing with metallurgical coal as opposed to thermal coal. Our biggest customer there would be tech in southeastern British Columbia. Significant customer, not huge in the overall scheme of things for us, but a significant customer. What are your customers saying about getting uh, qualified personnel for working on this right now? Is it still a squeeze? Yeah, and this gets back to the pace of development. If, if we can get the qualified technicians, it makes things go a lot better. This is for us with respect to heavy-duty mechanics, electricians as an example, but also because of, or for our customers in terms of what they need for their mine developments and expansions. That's still an issue, especially in places like Fort McMurray. Uh, we still need qualified people in uh, McMurray and other hotspots. Uh, Chile is uh, very uh, similar in the uh, up in the Antofagasta region and uh, the Atacama Desert. Qualified mechanics, swelders, electricians in big demand. I'm talking to Caterpillar at uh, Mine Expo and yes. it was regarding autonomous uh, yeah. uh, autonomous work right now as well too. What are the customers saying with you? Is, is there an adoption for this or what do they need or what do they see there? The technology is there. It's exciting technology. Uh, there is a demand for it. Uh, customers want to ensure that it works obviously and it's a pretty big uh, decision for those customers when they make that very significant uh, development obviously with respect to how they manage labor force even with respect to how they lay out the mines for the autonomous trucks to move around those mines, the road construction and so on, uh, has a lot of ramifications, but there's tremendous excitement about it. I believe it'll come, and customers are continuing to look for, obviously, ways to improve productivity, and that will happen at some point. Going back to Latin America, you mentioned uh, Argentina within uh, your Q3 yes. as well, too, and some of the problems that are happening yeah. there right now as well, too. Yeah. It's tremendously frustrating, you know, Argentina is such a big country, it's a beautiful, rich country, and so in our case, as many others are in the same situation, we have problems accessing U.S. dollars. So for us, we try to bring in Caterpillar equipment who want to be paid in U.S. dollars and we can't get access to those U.S. dollars. Uh, it isn't getting any better, I don't think it's getting any worse. The way we're managing that is we're taking the new product and putting it into Chile, which is strong enough to take that product. And uh, with respect to our Argentina business, we're basically running a business there uh, that's a parts and service business. So we're supporting our existing customer base there. And it's working okay, but it could be an awful lot better. A big number that was coming out of your Q3 was uh, what was happening with uh, the product support segment as well, too. And that was up, yeah. I think, 35%. Yes. Why yeah. is that growing right now? It's a lot of things. It's, it's about what we do, right? At the end of the day, it's got to be our capability in terms of our technical capability, our rebuild capability, our service, our parts. And when you put that together with the cat quality product in the marketplace, that's what has to differentiate that, us. So that's what we have to focus on. Uh, but beyond that is a function of the installed base of machines that are in the territory that continues to grow. And so when you put all of those things together, it gives us good strong growth in that part of our business, which is critically important to us. Uh, last question was regarding Bucyrus integration right now as well too. How is that going? I guess that is winding up. Uh, the integration is going very well. It's successful. Uh, we, the risks that we thought we would have, which was mostly in the area of uh, parts supply, from Caterpillar after they acquire Bucyrus. That's the biggest risk we anticipated. And that's the biggest issue we're seeing right now. For the most part, we're managing that. We've managed that through precautionary parts inventory. Uh, but the business is there. We think it's a tremendous opportunity. It's been accretive to us uh, year to date uh, in 2012. And our customers are very excited about the fact that we can give them that integrated solution. We can give them the big shovel. We can give them the truck solution that goes along with that. It's a tremendously exciting opportunity. Thank you very much for your time.